What's going on everybody? It is Tuesday night. I'm gonna try and get this truck basically 100%. Everything that I was looking to get is here. I think I should be able to finish this up uh, and just get this thing ready to go so that I can leave tomorrow on schedule. All right, these are my old black body panels. So, you know, you can tell it's beat up. This truck's got a, it's got plenty of use on it, you know. They're dented, those rear corners are, are smashed in. That tail, you know, the number panel's all bent. But you can just tell that the, the rash on the, on the wrap is, is pretty significant. Anyway, I had some old, some blem panels. So these panels were not perfect. During the machining process, there was some things that caused like a, a lip on the top of these panels. And rather than, throw them away because they, there wouldn't be something that would be what we'd want to send to a customer. I just kind of held on to them for a long enough period. And then I was going to use them on this, but I had ordered a wrap that was basically the exact same as my old wrap, but I changed the blue to orange. Well, I, I thought when I ordered the wrap, that was a while ago and I was just going to put them on these panels. Well, when you put an orange ramp, an orange wrap on orange panels, it just looks bad. So what I decided to do is I'm cleaning the old wrap off and then I'm applying uh, the new wrap to those panels. On the old wrap, this is a wrap all the way out to the end with the number. I ordered this with the new style. Well, the new style doesn't have that number on it anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking and cutting off along that blue line and it's gonna leave this all raw panel. And that's what you see here. And actually what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take this over to laser and I'm gonna laser my little HD logo onto the panel itself. The hood is basically gonna be as it is. You know, it'll show the rock rash. You'll get to see, you know, what this thing looks like after after some runtime. You can see the, the aluminum scratched and it's it's through there, but I don't think that there's there's any hiding that it's not a new car anymore. I also have a new roof panel. This is one that I had hand cut uh, and use for here. I used I, the 025 aluminum that I always use. That's what this is here. Cosmetics are kind of a lot of what I plan to do tonight. I do need to get the shocks finished up as well and get those uh, properly bled and, you know, look at the spring rates that I have, figure out what I'm thinking, how I want to tune those in, you know, the fine tuning. And the last thing I'm going to do is get my drive shafts done. Now there's a pile of drive shaft parts here. These are actually, uh, some of the earlier prototypes from the Incision HD shafts, which use the Chromoly Universal joints from the VXD. So this is a hardened pin or a hardened machined cross out of Chromoly as well as Chromoly bushings. And those are what the Incision HD drive shafts use. That's the plan. It's currently 6.01. So I've got a decent amount of time. Hopefully I'm not as late as I was last night. You never know. It's always something, maybe I'll forget to install the lights again or something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna start with getting the drive shafts assembled and I should go get these panels lasered as well. Now I'm just gonna finish building up the front drive shaft. The benefit to these drive shafts is that they're a completely rebuildable universal joint and it's that chromoly universal uh, at that. So super strong and rebuildable completely. Now they aren't for sale yet, they'll be for sale in the future here. Looks like I should have the drive shaft done in another five or 10 minutes, and then I can move on to finishing up the lasering on my panels. Both drive shafts are done. So I can test it now, uh, make sure that everything's working properly. I should probably do that just to make sure that, uh, you know, all the wiring is good, the whole deal. I spun up the motor yesterday, that was spinning fine. I do need to program that Mamba Exo, so I do need to take that into the office, plug it into my Castle Link, and then get that going. Before I do that, I'm gonna get this old panel cleaned up and get the uh, new graphics applied to it. Now the new roof panel I have is a laser cut sheet of aluminum. So I actually need to bend that. I've got a simple Harbor Freight little bender and that's what I'm gonna use. So sorry for the bad lighting, but this is the bender. It's a super simple little thing. This is the, I think the 18 inch version. You clamp the piece into these jaws, use some C clamps, and you basically just lift this up and it'll bend your part.
So that's the piece of steel that it gets clamped under. And then you can see that's the break. So I had my old roof as the guide, just kind of took a rough uh, guesstimate on it. So we'll see that. I might've overbent it a little bit, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see how that works. Yeah, it's overbent a little bit, but I can flatten that back out. I've got a set of duckbill pliers. These are handy for doing large sections, trying to keep things as, trying to keep everything as even as possible. And that'll do it. So, got that bend flattened back out. Now I can apply the new roof sticker to this and get it put on the truck. <clears throat> so it's eight o'clock. The panels are completely ready to go as far as the um, decals. Again, these are from Freaky Skins. So this is the same design as I ran last year. Basically just had them reprint it with the orange instead of the blue. Been waiting on that for just a little bit. Ordered them a while ago. I do want to put a little bit of something back on the hood. Right now I got everything stripped off down to black before I took and just kind of used a little piece of extra. See, you can kind of see I cut some shapes out of here and that's actually, those shapes are what I use to put these random pieces on. Um, but I'll probably cut another shape out of this and apply it to the hood. The other thing that I want to do is I'm going to go put the logo onto these panels. So I'm going to go fire up the laser and get that burned on there before I get these installed onto the car. So this is the little logo that I use. I burn this on a lot of things. You can see the red outline around the outside of the logo and that is the uh, lines that it projects to be able to tell where the lasering is going to be. Before I bolt on all the panels, I wanted to just button up wiring, make sure that nothing could get into my spur gear. My spur gear is exposed. I, there isn't room for a spur gear cover on this. Anyway, just want to be a little extra cautious. So I've uh, cut a piece of Lexan here and then I put a small bend in it. And I'm gonna put this mounted in there. And with the interior on, the interior should sit basically at that same level and it'll just keep my, elect and it'll just keep my uh, battery wires protected slightly more from the spur gear. I have been known to have a, a lipo issue with a car like that before. So I don't want that to happen again, of course. So I'm gonna get this put in place, two-sided taped on permanently for now. And I hope that that will uh, just keep me a little bit safer. One more thing done and a little bit closer to wrapping this thing up. And while we have the easy access, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing into the castle link. All right, so I've got the Mamba X plugged in. My basic settings that I pretty much always do, I do three volts per cell, reverse type, crawler reverse, BEC voltage, we're gonna go to 7.5. Disable data log full warning. The Mamba X has data logging and it can be powerful if you're really wanting to get into it. But what can be really annoying is if you don't turn that disable data log off, it will sit there and give you these chirp, these beeps every once in a while. And if you don't know what it is, it's just annoying. So click that box off. Uh, otherwise there's a couple of other ones that you can tweak as well as far as uh, purging the data constantly. But that one is the easiest one to just turn off. So drag brake, I usually run like between 30 and 40%. For this car, I'm gonna leave it at 30 for now. That's usually fine for me. I like a little bit of roll. now. The Mamba X also has that auxiliary wire where you can constantly adjust the drag brake or a number of other functions and I absolutely love that function. However, I'm running a four channel radio in this car right now. I'm running my Fataba 4PV because it's one of my favorite radios. Now if I was running my four or my 7PX, I could run my dig, my light controller and that auxiliary, but I'm not. I run the 4PV while I'm on the trail because if I fall and I break a $280 radio, it's not nearly as bad as falling and breaking a six or $800 radio or whatever that thing costs. But, so that that's why I'm running that. I'm choosing to run uh, my light controller rather than my auxiliary adjustability uh, for the Mamba X. For power, we're gonna go startup power high, max power 100, reverse percentage 100. Uh, punch control disabled, advanced, arming time, auxiliary wire mode. This is where you can adjust uh, some of those features. Motor, normal, smart sense brushless. That's what we're running. 
Uh, sensorless timing, we're gonna leave that as standard. Motor temperature cutoff disabled. Uh, throttle curves, I'm running linear. I, I usually run linear throttle and brake, nothing new there. And software, I'm on the most recent, I believe. And now I can go button up the rest of the car. So I've got my 5200 milliamp 3S pack in here. And if I put the wire leads this way, you can see that they run across and that little Lexan uh, piece there should actually help hold the wires out of the way pretty well. Actually work uh, better than I thought, as long as everything goes as planned. All right, this thing is wrapped up. Threw some graphics on the hood, just some, you know, kind of random colors, stripes, whatever through the, got all the uh, wraps in place. You can see the uh, HD on the back corner. Got the roof skin on through a Harley sticker in the middle of it. It's good to go, wiring's all set. Uh, tested it with the radio. It moves on its own power. The dig works, the lights work. Should be good to go. There is a couple of things that I haven't done yet. I didn't mount the radiator fans and shrouds. I still wanna try and do that before we go. And then the one thing I got, forgot, which is basically a factor of when I was doing the wiring is I forgot to wire in the functioning radiator fan. So, you know, it's what happens when I'm in too much of a rush to, to sit down and make sure I've got everything right. I kind of like the refresh. I'm glad that I got to use the, uh, the colors that I, that I did this year. I think they, they look good. The wheels and everything match. Everything looks pretty good. Excited to get it back there on the rocks. This year, you know, with it being scraped up and stuff, I won't be as hesitant to beat on it as I was last. Now, I do still have to get my carnivore prepped. A, I've got one thing I've got to get fixed on it before I go. And then I've got to glue the headlight lenses into the honcho budget build. So the honcho budget build, I'm gonna take up there. Matt Kett from Scale Builders Guild will have his honcho budget build up there. We'll be able to take those out on the trails together for the first time. Should be a good deal, good time. And then after uh, we're done with that, both of us are going to sell those trucks. So um, we're done with those. If we can, we'll probably sell them up there. If Matt doesn't sell his, I think he'll probably leave his here with me in the States. That was a, a fun project. It was, uh, but it's done, so. You know, hopefully somebody else will enjoy that build as well. Before I go, I'm gonna go grab a couple of things to show you guys what the rippers are made of. Um, just so that you can kind of maybe try and appreciate honestly what goes into one of these cars. We went over my ripper and kind of how this, you know, is assembled, the whole deal. Now this was one of the prototypes, which is slightly different. This is a brand new uh, build. This was done by Brandon here. Uh, this is his personal ripper, one of the, the guys here in the office. Uh, and he basically, of course, went with a blacked out theme, as you can tell. Now, some of the differences between my prototype and one of these production ones, you can see this bar here is new. Mine doesn't have that. You can also see that there's an integrated light bar mount, which of course mine does not have. Um, and then back here, you can see this little panel that is separate. See how it's bolted on back there with two screws. That's a separate wing panel. And that was uh, done because, you know, after running this one, we noticed that these panels built into this one tend to get folded over and they kind of want to tweak this whole side panel in here. So separated it from the actual panel, made it a bolt on replaceable piece. And that was the reasoning behind that. So those are the major changes between the two. Now, like I said, this is a very expensive car. Uh, it's not a full car kit. It's just an add-on piece to basically an SCX-10-2 style truck. If you don't understand maybe why this whole thing is an $1,899 package, you know, I'll, I'll try and show you a, a little bit more here. So this again you know the side panel as i explained in a couple videos ago it's five pieces this one large side piece behind that body panel this is what that piece looks like right off the machine so you can see this is all all milled this way and it's it's got a lot of depth to it you can see so that's that's what that piece is when it's all machined now to make this this is the block of aluminum that that is what that creates so as you can see, you know, you need this huge block of aluminum to create one side panel. 
So you need two chunks of aluminum like this, just for the two side panels of the car. Then you have the three center sections, which take another piece about this big, you know, for all three of those. The hood starts as like a, I can't remember if it's seven or nine pounds. And the side panels are done together. And I think that piece is somewhere around that I don't remember 12 or 16 pounds somewhere in that range if I, I can't remember exactly correctly but to add up all of those pieces and then of course the grill as well since the grill is machined also so not including the bumper the links you know a lot of those other little pieces like that just to do the chassis itself and the body panels it's almost a hundred pounds of aluminum you know that it starts with and then turns into something actually very lightweight to take that much aluminum and turn it into that little aluminum, there's a lot of machine time and machine time is what actually uh, costs the money. So now it, it may seem like a wasteful thing to take that much aluminum and turn it into this much, but that's just the nature of machining. You know, you have to take a big block and turn it into something small. That, that's how it works. All the chips are collected, all of them are recycled. So none of that gets thrown away or is wasted. So that don't look at it that way, but they're, you know, it's still a lot of aluminum and a ton of machine work. I always feel like, you know, showing this this example here is, is a good, uh, just kind of, it gives you an idea of what goes into making something like this. Some people, it, it you can show them huge blocks of aluminum all day long and they will still call you every name you've ever heard for buying an $1,899 chassis kit. But for those of you who are looking to buy it, you can of course choose the anodizing color of uh, the body panels and the cage separately. This one, not the best example of color choices because it's obviously all black and then it's sitting next to a black one here. However, as you can see, you know, the orange body panels, you know, you can also do, so you can do clear, black, gray, red, blue, and orange for your choices and you know, make any combination of those things that you want for your body and chassis. You can make a Skittles car for all I care. But with that, at 10 o'clock on the dot, I'm going to call that a night. I do still have plenty of work to do tomorrow, but it's just little things on other cars and then getting things packed like my tools and spares, anything like that that I plan to take. And then of course the actual displays and such that we're taking for the Vanquish booth. I hope you guys have enjoyed the vlog style videos in preparation for this event. They're kind of fun. They give me a little bit more motivation to get, you know, progress done each day and so forth. I'll try and continue to shoot, edit, and upload daily videos um, while I'm up at Axia Fest. We'll see how that goes. I don't remember how reception is up there, especially for data, because I will have to upload the file from my phone. But if it's good, I will try and upload daily. So thanks for watching guys. Leave a comment if you have one. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you tomorrow.